Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam sliman kathiran wa ba'd. My brothers and sisters, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. If uh, we are far from each other, body-wise, I believe and I can see it that the community, they are close to one another heart-wise. And that's what matter is those hearts. You find a lot of people, they are close with their bodies, but their hearts are far from one another. But you can feel it, subhanAllah, uh, that uh, the community is coming together, and this is great. And we start always with the dua, which is our weapon, which is the thing that is highly recommended for us. And this dua, inshallah, is very comprehensive. Just say ameen, inshallah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afiyya fi dunya wal akhira. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyya fi deenina wa dunyana wa ahlina wa malina. Allahumma astur awaratina wa amin rawatina. اللهم احفظنا من بين أيدينا ومن خلفنا وعن أيماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعوذ بعظمتك أن نغتال من تحتنا يا حي يا قيوم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكن إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. إن شاء الله will tell you why I recited this two sura if we have some time. سبحان الله just in the last one if we have a lot of stuff in my mind that I want to share with you. I hope I can give as much as I can because سبحان الله regardless of what's going on always everything has to side. The bad and the good. And it's up to you which side you want to see. And subhanallah, the good side is overwhelming. And maybe tonight I might cover two topics. Uh, even though the second one is my goal that I'm going to focus on all these khatiras, inshallah, to come. But the first one is to address one issue. The issue of the anxiety and the fear. That subhanallah, we should not have it. And as I said, we should not have it because for one reason, because we are believers. And the believer is different than the other human being. Because somebody might ask, well, the believer is a human being. No, you are not. And I hope just calm down and relax, inshallah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spoke about that. Whatever I'm saying is not from my own. And you can go and check it, inshallah. And let your heart deal with this Quran, mashallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about the human being, he talks about the nature of the human being. But always he makes exceptions. And these exceptions, he didn't say except a human being. Always he makes the exception with a believer. And let's take this surah that all of you, you memorize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر Allah swears by the time that man is in loss. Then comes the exception. He didn't say except the human being or no. He said, إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. So this exception because of the iman. And number two, the verse that we've been dealing with for a while in Surah Al-Ma'arij, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the nature of a human being without iman, without faith. He says, Man created anxious. When 
evil touches him in patience and he lost the balance. And when good touches him, he would hold. That's his human being in general. Then Allah made the exception. المصلين, except the Musallin. And the Musallin here means the believers. Because after that, he talks about their characteristic. So this anxiety, uh, I don't know why. And I hope, inshallah, with this khatira, we are going to deal with it, inshallah. Because the anxiety is the problem that is worse than coronavirus millions of times. Because anxiety and fear and phobia will weaken your immune system. Because you will be under a lot of stress. And subhanallah, I want to challenge you with this question today. If the iman and the faith doesn't make you different, what is the difference between you and an atheist? The atheist is going to say, well, why I need to have faith? Here is some a believer and he is anxious like me and he's scared and he is panicking. We should not. And here I'm talking about your heart. Alhamdulillah, precautions, we take care of them. I just today sent to Brother Hose and Sister Ismahan some tips how to protect yourself that was given to me by Dr. Bassam Damaj, and I send it. So that is out of question. Nobody can come and say, well, and that and that. Because there are cases where the person is at home. He doesn't go outside and he has everything and he's still scared and anxious. So the problem, the faith should make you different than anybody else. Because that's what Allah is expecting from you. And what does it mean, the faith? That you believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you in the Quran and Sunnah. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will happen to us except if Allah decreed on us. And more ahadith and verses that you know. And subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, these things, these verses and ahadith, maybe this is the first time you're going to hear this. The job and the goal of these verses and ahadith that talks about like this, about qadar and so on, the job of these verses to take you out of the box. Now humanity is inside the box. And what does it mean inside the box? There is a collective thinking. And this collective thinking is nothing but anxiety and fear. So if you don't pay attention and you take yourself outside the box, it will attract you. You know, like that triangle in, in the Atlantic, the plane go around it because so powerful it's going to attract you. So the collective thinking is anxiety and fear and this and that and that. So this ahadith and verses wants to take you out of the box. And you think different. And this is where you get the peace. And you get the tranquility. Is that what is needed now? People who are going to suffer from anxiety more than those who are going to suffer from this virus. Why, my brothers and sisters, as believers, we need to have this understanding. Wallahi, I'm not scared from this virus, I swear by Allah. Not because I'm a superman, no. But for one simple reason that you're going to agree with me. That this virus is one of the creatures of Allah like me and you like anybody else. The forehead of this virus is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The virus cannot act on its own. It cannot act on its own. It acts by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to be busy with the virus and forget the owner and forget the master and forget the creator, you are missing the point. You remember the story of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the ta'if, after he came from the ta'if and you know what happened to him. The angel of the mountains came to him. He said, Allah is sending me to you 
to tell me what you want to do. The mountains at all your service. If you want me, I can crush the two mountains on them. So the mountains, they are sitting by themselves, but they cannot do anything. They cannot be crushed without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope you understand this because as I said, anxiety and this fear is what we call self-creating pain. And it weaken your system. It make you confused. You make you panic. And most of the people that this suffer or they might get even this virus, God forbid, those who panics. And you may make mistake and you may have it. So I want you to relax, my brothers and sisters. And as I told you, you are different. Otherwise, there is no meaning for the faith. Faith has no meaning anymore. A number to this dua that we do when we leave the house. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم إني أعوذ بك من أن أضل أو أضل أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أزل أو أزل أو أجهل أو يجهل علي You don't know what, what are you saying It's like somebody who has the full coverage and he worries about things and so on or I still remember when we were little children and we are going with our dad and there is a cat or something, we start crying and, and he said, what's wrong with you? I am with you. So please, I'm talking to your heart. I'm not talking about your body, which is that you have to take precaution. We know that. And mashallah, uh, we went to the extreme in the concession when it comes to Sharia. We pray, and uh, about uh, six feet between uh, the two worshippers. I'm talking about your heart, because you need that sakina. And as I said, my brothers and sisters, the Qadar has two levels. Either it didn't come down yet, so when we make dua, the dua can stop it. It will not come down. Or it's already here, like in our case. So what is the job of the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease the severity of it and make the duration of it short, inshallah. It's going to take its course. But the question, who's going to pass the test, who's going to do that, and who's going to do that, and so on. I want to conclude with one thing, maybe for you to help you in the beginning. If you are a beginner, I know to reach this level of tranquility, and to believe that nothing will happen to you without Allah's permission, it takes some time. I want to give you one thing practical. We know there are a lot of causes for death. Because the bottom line, why people are panicking, they are scared of death. Because really, if you can assure the person, you tell him, for sure you are not going to die. Even if you are touched by this virus, everybody will come down. Because when you dig deep, the problem, people are scared from death. But as believers, we know we die when our time comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we are in the womb of our mother, at four months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angel. He will breathe the soul in us and write four things on our forehead. One of them, for how long we're going to live. By the second, nobody will take, coronavirus will not take one second, will not add you one second, nothing. So, but I'm going to give you this practical step that you can use in the beginning, it helps you, inshallah, uh, overcoming this. But really, the solution is what I said. Because the greatest sabab, the greatest means, because people are talking about asbab, we need to do, do tie the camel, and uh, real, the greatest sabab ever is tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes you find yourself, you can do anything. What about people like in the camps? May Allah help our brothers and in Syria or somewhere else. What about those Muslims that are in prison? without legitimate cause. They are crowded. They are so they don't have the privilege that we have that we can stay away from each other and so on. So the greatest sabab that you need to have is tawakkul on Allah, to trust and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I give you this before I move to the second topic. There are 
millions of causes for death. Subhanallah, I was uh, reading and watching, and this is just the flu. Kill half million people a year. Heart attack, one million people. All this. So what you can do? Said, well, if there is, let's take just 1,000 causes of death. No more than 1,000. What are you going to do? Say, well, coronavirus, make it 1,001. And that's it. Then you make the calculation, what is the chance for me to get coronavirus? So 1,001 divided by, and you do the math. I'm just telling you. But there are other causes that they are more dangerous than coronavirus, but we are not panicking. Why? Because we get used to them. Coronavirus is new, and also the media, sometimes the way they put things and so on, because they are also, uh, either they don't have the faith and so on, and they are panicking themselves or whatever might be the reason. But just because we get used to it. And I'm sure, inshallah, this coronavirus will go away, and people they will get used to it. Next year, nobody cares. We are human beings like this. Anything new scares us and so on. But as I said, this is just a step toward what you need to do. What you need to do is to strengthen your tawakkul on Allah. The last one, I want to say something here, and uh, because... Uh, uh, many times we don't pay attention to it. And maybe I'm addressing some brothers and sisters specifically if they have this. If you are a person, generous person, that you are giving zakat, taking care of uh, orphans and widows and helping left and right, to be panicking and having anxiety, you have a problem. And this problem means that you don't understand Islam. This is the best excuse I can give you. You are doing this and Allah will let you down. You are taking care of these people and Allah will not. This is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I spoke on, uh, uh, I think in the fundraising, and I said, look, when the Prophet وسلم, came to Khadija in the beginning of Revelation, and he came scared. He told her, I don't know what happened to me. I'm scared. Look what she said to him. She swears by Allah, telling him, Wallahi, Wallahi, Allah will not let you down. Why? And she said five things that the Prophet used to do. He used to take care of the poor and the needy and do this and do that. And you know the story. So if you are in this category, you have to know that Allah, you are in good hand. Again, as I said, we are talking about your heart at peace. Because that hadith always will be there in front of us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it's whole, the whole body will be whole. And if it's corrupted or weak or dead, the whole body will follow through. And this work in medicine and work in the spiritual your immune system is, is something you, is intangible. You cannot touch it. What does it mean immune system? So when your heart is strong, your immune system will be strong. And there is nothing that can destroy the immune system like anxiety. And there is nothing that can strengthen your immune system like tawakkul and dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believe, not everybody, and their heart find a rest in the remembrance of Allah. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, hearts find rest. That's why this ibadah of dhikr, subhanallah and dua, is different than any ibadah. When Allah spoke about the type of Muslims and believers in Surah Al-Ahzab, 
إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين so on so on and he talk about those who are patient those who pray those who give zakat those 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 and he come to the last quality and he said والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات and those who mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot and there is nothing as he said can strengthen your immune system except tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you are doing good giving charity I want you to relax my brother please please shaitan is giving an another lecture now because the goal of shaitan is to make people anxious because when you are anxious that's it everything blocked in you your mind your organs your systems inside everything shuts down so relax think out of the box otherwise my brothers and sisters the message that you are giving what is the difference between you and atheist tell me just tell me you have to be different you have to be different that's why the prophet said the prophet is wondering the affairs of the believer, not a human being. In asabatuhu sarra'un shakar wa kana thalika khayrun lah wa in asabatuhu darra'un sabar wa kana thalika khayrun lah So I hope these things were done with it. And whenever you feel that fear and anxiety is from shaitan, that's why now you understand why I recited this to call. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Shaitan now he has the waswasa. Oh look, and this, and that, and that, and that. And always there is that debate between shaitan and the reminder. Always. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Shaitan promised you poverty and he commanded you to do uh, immorality and to be miser. The reminder, Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. And Allah promises you forgiveness and abundance. Now you have two lectures. You make the call. And I'm sure that you're going to, inshallah, be with the call that remind you that Allah is in charge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing happened without His will. Ma sha'allahu kan wa ma lam yasha' lam yakun. Subhanallah, one prophet, that the scholar, they wonder, what is his miracle? We know the miracles of every prophet except one. It's not mentioned. What is his miracles? The message of Allah, hood, hood. Tell me what is his miracle? I, I'm, I'm sure you will not have an answer. But his miracles is what? When he challenged his people. You know, the people of Ad, they were strong people. And here is one man challenging them. Look what he says. Inni tawakkaltu ala Allahi rabbi wa rabbikum. Ma min dabbatin illa huwa akhidun bi nasiyatiha. Inna rabbi ala siratin mustaqim. A man by himself, without nobody with him, challenging these people. That they said, Man ashaddu minna quwa. Who's stronger than us? They used to say that. This man stand up by himself and challenging them. So Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, this is his miracle. And why he did this? Inni tawakkaltu ala Allahi rabbi wa rabbikum. I put my trust on Allah which is my Lord and your Lord. No creatures ma min dabbatin fil ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of it. So you have to know that this virus is one of the creatures of Allah. He cannot harm you without the permission of Allah. I'm working on the peace of your heart, the tranquility that we need. You know, look in the time of difficulty and fear, Always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send sakina. You remember, that's why here I'm just reminding myself and you, when the Prophet and Abu Bakr, they were in the cave. 
And of course, here what we call the natural fear. Natural fear means there is something immediate in front of you, you get scared, but that's it, it takes one, that moment. So Abu Bakr, he was scared, he said, Ya Rasulullah, if one of them look at his foot, they will see us. Then the Prophet, he told him, I agree with you, yes. If we are without Allah, but if Allah with us, he told him, Ya Abu Bakr, don't grieve, don't be sad. What do you think of two? The third one of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And immediately Allah confirmed that. And he said, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا وَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا السُّفْلَى وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلِيَا وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Your heart, my brothers and sisters, your heart, your heart. We need now to outsource that fear. That fear that we have and that anxiety, we need it in another way. Instead of fearing coronavirus, let's fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fear of Allah is positive. Subhanallah. The fear of anything else, it hurts you. The fear of Allah is positive. It makes you strong. That's why this dua does not apply only to the human being. It applies to anyone. You know, when the Muslim after Uhud and the defeat and so on, Quraysh did send a letter to the Prophet saying, we are coming to finish you. Then Allah spoke about that in the Quran and said, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُ He said, you need to fear them and this and that. And unfortunately, sometimes, as I said, we are telling a person who is sick, don't come to the congregation, this and that, because you're going to spread the virus. There is another person who should not come to the congregation. It's haram for you, I'm giving this fatwa, to come to congregation and speak if you have anxiety, because you're going to spread the fear. And the fear does more harm than the other one. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ This dua work even for the virus. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله So I hope we took care of that. You are in good hand as long as you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if somebody has an arrow and he's shooting left and right. What is the best place to save yourself from his arrows? Is to be beside him. So when you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through praying, through sadaqah, through dua, you are under the protection. And even the dua, the means that we are doing, Staying away from this and that and that and that. All these good things that they are telling you, the professionals, to do them. But they are means. We are, do, we are doing them just to worship Allah. Because Allah told us, take precautions. Like the dua itself. When you are making dua, is not but Allah doesn't know about you. And you are telling him, he's ignorant about your situation. We don't do that. Or Allah forget about you and you are reminding him through dua. We don't do that. So we are making dua as ibadah to show our humility and to show our poverty and to say to Allah, Ya Allah, without you we are nothing. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So inshallah, I think we have five minutes for, before the adhan because we try to keep it with the adhan. We don't want you to stay after that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and give you serenity and tranquility in your house, inshallah, in your heart. And also, you are the model for your children. If you are panicking, if you are anxious, if you are worried, your children will follow you. Be strong and tell them we are believers because of this iman. Otherwise, I don't know what is the job of the iman, why we should have it, if it doesn't do anything to me. The second topic, which is the most important topic, 
that we need to dwell on it. And shaitan is very shrewd. Subhanallah. He knows that we need to take advantage of this situation. And this test either is going to strengthen your iman or the other one. Either he's going to get the best out of you or the worst of you. Shaitan, he knows this. So subhanallah, that's why he deviates people, especially the masajid and the practicing Muslim. Now, the fight is being with him in masajid. Those who close, they might accuse those who didn't close that they are hardliner, they are this, they are, and those who didn't close, they are accusing the other one that they don't have tawakkul. And everybody is missing the point. My brothers and sisters, we're going to start with this and we will continue tomorrow. Coronavirus is a mailman bringing a message to us. A letter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happened to us, we dwelled on the mailman and we forget the letter. What is the message? Because the coronavirus will go away. I'm 100% inshallah is going to go away. May Allah make it soon. But the problem, if I didn't get the message, I missed the point. So what is the message here, my brothers and sisters? It's the same message that we've been talking about and everybody's talking about and so on. We have to know, my brothers and sisters, that Allah created us and created this universe and al-Jannah and nar and everything for one thing. The purpose behind the creation is one thing. That the human being should fulfill that verse that we talk about. That middle verse in Surah Al-Fatiha. That is the purpose. Whatever is happening, whatever is going on, whatever creation that you see in front of you and you is to fulfill that verse. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ that's it. And many people, they are not doing this. And some people may do part of this one and part of this one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the goal. You worship him alone and you seek help from him alone. And seeking help here means tawakkul. That's why this verse in Al-Fatiha was repeated four times in the Quran. But in different way. فَعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ فَعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ Worship him and have tawakkul on him. So worship him in our case, I do precautions. I wash my hand and I stay away from gathering. This is worship. But tawakkul عَلَيْهِ is my heart. So I want you to pay attention because uh, I spoke khatira uh, usually is 10 minutes, 15. I'm going to stop here. That is the goal. But this goal, you cannot achieve it without a prerequisite. Is get to know the one that you're going to worship and the one that you're going to have tawakkul on. Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why there are three verses before this one. Allah introduces himself before he said, worship me and seek help from me. He introduced himself as Rabb, as Rahman, as Malik or Malik. My brothers and sisters, the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending is to get to know him. And to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is three levels. And listen to me, please pay attention. I'm going to let you go, but I want to keep this most important things with you before I leave, inshallah. The number one is علم اليقين. We're reading the Quran and the Sunnah about Allah. He is Rahim, He is Kareem. We don't see Him, Allah is unseen. So we read about Him. It gives us the knowledge. If you ask any Muslim, who's the Razzaq? Allah. Who's the Shafi, the one who. Allah. Who's Allah? Allah, Allah. Khalas, now you have علم اليقين. The second level is عَيْنُ yaqeen. You have to see these attributes of Allah in front of you. 
And Wallah, Subhanallah, now for me in this uh, two weeks or whatever, since I start paying attention to Corona before I was not paying attention, I start seeing the Quran. I see it more than I read it. Now you can see what does it mean Allah ala kulli shay in Qadir. You can see it. The power of Allah. Is there any other one more powerful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This virus is a start in the most strong, sophisticated, everything you can think countries. And everybody is raising their hand. We can do anything, nothing. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you are seeing the power of Allah, not in knowledge, but with your eyes. Subhanallah. People are, they can say anything. They can do anything. With the virus, that as I said, you have, in order to see it, you need an electronic uh, microscope. And you have to magnify it 100,000 times. And subhanAllah, even the name, as I mentioned, Corona. Why it's mentioned Corona? Because this virus has a crown. Yeah, he's coming with a crown. So, can you doubt now the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where are they? Subhanallah, I was listening to the news before I came, and the president of China, he said, before coronavirus started, he said, our economy is going to go up. We're never going to stop. Subhanallah. It reminded me with the people uh, of Hood, when they said, Man ashaddu minna quwa. Who is more powerful than us? Then Quran responded, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةِ They didn't see that Allah who created them is more powerful than them. Look, look. Tell me. Nobody can do anything. Subhanallah. مَا أَقْوَاك. الجبار. القوي. العزيز. You can see the attributes of Allah. الحكيم. Look the حكمة. The wisdom of Allah. والله. Just to talk about the wisdoms of Allah in this month. One of them, I was talking to people. I have never seen it in my life. How the community are coming together. This rahmah, this mercy among people. People are calling one another. Do you need anything? I will bring it to you. In time where everybody is selfish. Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is the one out of the bad it brings the good. Look, look this rahma. How many people are coming back to Allah? I just talked to somebody. He was not, I was talking to him for many years to pray. And always he said no. Now he's going to the masjid and praying. Al-Hakim. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hakim. That's why the brothers who are asking how we can help and so on. Really my advice is to look for this organization because they have uh, the information about people. There are ways that they can investigate who needs and who do not. Because unfortunately, there are some people that take advantage in this situation. Maybe they are not in need and take advantage. So this kind of organization like MCS and others, give them your donation and they will take them to the right people, mashallah. So you don't have to worry about that. But look, here is the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look. And you can see more and more. Now we are saying the names of Allah. Ar-Rahma. Ar-Rahma of Allah, regardless. Without his Rahma, look what can happen. Still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring in the Rahma to people. And the third level of knowledge, we call it Haqqul Yaqeen. And that will be in the Day of Judgment where we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything that is happening is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the message. Because the more you know him, the more you worship him and ask help from him. The more you know him, the more you love him. And al-ibadah is love. The more you know him, the more you show gratitude to him. Because worship is showing gratitude. So that is the message. If you missed it, you missed everything. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you. May Allah protect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put serenity and peace and tranquility in our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away our anxiety and fear and disturbance from our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us yaqeen as the dua goes. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatik ma tahawlu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atik ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawinu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya wa matti'na Allahumma bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwatina abadan ma ahyaytana واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم ارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا ولا تهلكنا بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم ارفع عنا هذا البلاء وهذه الجائحة اللهم ارفع عنا هذا البلاء وهذه الجائحة اللهم ارفع عنا هذا البلاء وهذه الجائحة اللهم إنا نعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك ونعوذ بك منك ونعوذ بك منك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على محمد